want to call the Hopkinton Town Council meeting of October 6, 2014 to order with a moment of silent meditation and salute to the flag. First on our uh, agenda is the consent agenda. Approve the town council meeting minutes of September 15th, 2014. Set November 3rd, 2014 as a hearing date for renewals of liquor licenses and victualing licenses. Set October 2nd, 2014 as a hearing date for the special event permit filed by the Friends of the Land Trust. Approve refunds submitted by the tax collector. Motion to approve the town council meeting minutes Please. of September 15th. Set. November 3rd, 2014 is the hearing date for the renewals of liquor licenses and approved refunds submitted by the tax collector. Oh, do you have something? Sorry. Oh. Did you have a second? Yeah, second, please. I get a, I'm going to have to abstain because I wasn't at that meeting. Last second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, at least I'm going to abstain because yeah. I wasn't at the meeting yeah. on September 15th. And thank you for, for not including yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I want to correct it because it needs to be done. Oh, do we still need to correct it? Yes. Yeah. All right. So then we, um, I make a motion to correct the special um, that we are going to be setting October 20th, 2014, as a hearing date for a special event permit filed by the Friends of the Land Trust. For a class F. F. Liquor license. Thank you. Okay. Now we need a second. That's you. Uh, can, I, can I do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I have, do I have stain on that one no, also? No, 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 you get to vote. Okay. On that aye, one. aye. Aye. <laughs> okay. First public forum. Anyone out there wishing to be heard? Mr. Thompson. Thank you very much. My name is Tom Thompson. I live in Hope Valley, and. Um, my son is the owner of one of the new businesses that started up in town, mm -hmm. uh, Thompson's uh, Flowers and Antiques. This has been a dream of his for uh, a long time, and he's worked hard at it. Uh, he couldn't be here tonight, and his apologies. He asked um, his helper to come along and, and uh, give his thanks uh, for the support the town has had in the process of him getting all of his permits together and that sort of thing. He had um, a soft opening this last week, so he's been open for a week. He's uh, very, um, very optimistic. He's got a tremendous um, uh, number of people to stop by and good comments, and uh, people are buying stuff, so that's always good. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking at uh, a couple of weeks of, of this kind of soft opening, and then um, he is a supporter of the Hop, uh, Hoppington um, Hop Arts. And so we expect to have a pretty big weekend that weekend. And the following weekend will be a, a grand opening and we expect big things from then on out. So um, some of you folks have stopped by the shop and uh, we obviously encourage anybody that wants to. Uh, it's all the way over to Hope Valley for you folks that live in, in Ashway. You can get down that way. Um, it's at the top of the, what used to be the top of the Hill restaurant. A lot of us know where that was. We actually, um, uh, Wendy, uh, the owner of that building actually had the original sign from the top of the hill restaurant so we actually have that inside the room up on one end so that's uh the old timers that come in that uh, gets them talking about what used to be there and so again i appreciate the, the support of the town council and the, and the zoning um, to get uh, to help jed through the process of getting everything all the ducks in a row so we could open this up so He's working hard at it. He's working seven days a week right now, um, delivering flowers in the morning, opening up typically at uh, 11 or 12 o'clock, and then staying there until 6. Yeah, I didn't see any flowers in there. I guess I, I went in there Sunday, but yesterday. Yeah, they're, they are in there. In there. I yeah, I we've got a cooler around. that's full of flowers, and, and uh, he's been selling uh, roses and, and all kinds of stuff. So, yep. I bought some pond storks. But, yeah. that. but it's nice yeah. he has that. Um, Pay system where you just slide, and he yeah, that text, little, he texted that me little the square. So, yeah, so that's, that's efficient. Uh, yeah, that's technology. Like that. and Paperless. Yeah. Beyond, way beyond my pay scale, but he, 
uses that so that it allows him to, to uh, accept uh, credit cards. Right. And he's also then, um, I just ordered a wreath from him because it's so nice to have someone who's building the wreaths. So you can have yeah. wreaths for the door that yeah. you can, um, you know, I don't have to go into Westerly. I don't yeah. have to go other places. I don't have to go online or in some catalog. I can actually have somebody make one. It's lovely. Yeah. So very excited about that. That's too. great. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks That's what I wanted to do was just to mention that. Thank you. I hope he does very well. Okay, next uh, on our agenda, folks, uh, Town Council present report, um, YMCA joint meeting and the Hopkinton Residence New Business Ventures. Um, the joint meeting um, was held at the um, Richmond Y uh, in uh, Richmond, and it was an early morning breakfast meeting. I, myself, Chief Palmer, was at another table with uh, area uh, council folks, uh, chiefs of police, uh, YMCA folks, folks from Charaho. Um, I was sitting with um, Lori Weber, the principal of the high school, uh, Chief Allen from Charlestown, and, and a few other folks from YMCA. But it was a good uh, joint meeting. We talked about a lot of things. One thing I walked away from was uh, it seemed to be was a transportation issue, trying to get folks from at least from our town to utilize some of their services in Richmond or or Westerly for that matter. But um, we walked away with maybe kind of combining forces to talk about uh, at a future date um, some transportation issues that might uh, allow our folks to uh, utilize some of those services. So uh, it was a good meeting, and uh, I don't know, our, our table was lively, and I'm sure Chief Palmas was too, but it, it was great. It was very good, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. Um, next up on my uh, report is the um, couple new businesses uh, opened up in town. One, uh, Mr. Thompson's son, Jebediah, opened up uh, the uh, antique and, and uh, florist shop. And also, too, there was a um, resident by the name of uh, Carrie Ann Bernard. She opened up a pet store. And the reason I, I want to mention this is that I have a dog, and he has a very special diet. And she carries a lot of different food that actually um, you wouldn't think that she would. And it's across the street from the um, Richmond Police Station. It's behind uh, near Napa. So please uh, try and. Uh, solicit she, that business for, for pet food. I know most of us have dogs or cats or whatever, so she was, she's a great lady, and uh, I told her I'd, I'd mention her shop. And lastly, um, it isn't actually here, but um, Kids Co. opened up their uh, daycare mm. center. It's been open about a, a month now. Mm. So um, they finally got up and running, uh, and that's on... Um, Seven Mechanic. Yeah, Mechanic Street, right. Seven Mechanic Street. Yep. Good. So, good. so, so we that's finally that. have a child care yeah. facility finally. in town. Yeah. Yeah. My goodness. Daycare, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, next on our agenda, town manager report, Bill McGarry. Thank you. Uh, on August 27th, a uh, meeting was held at the Crandall House to uh, wrap up the South Drive drainage improvement project. And uh, all the principals were in attendance uh, to resolve the few remaining issues related to the project. And uh, Brian Russo and uh, Tim Tepp worked together, and we've already submitted the required FEMA reimbursement paperwork to REMA, and it goes up to FEMA from there. So we don't anticipate any problems on, on the reimbursement, and hopefully the, the check will be in the mail soon. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, during the month of September, I drafted an internal posting notice and public advertisement uh, to announce the soon-to-be vacant uh, deputy finance clerk position. Uh, Agnes Hall has uh, submitted her retirement papers, but she's agreed to uh, <laughs> she's agreed to stay on until we can get somebody in place, which is very important and really, really helps out the town. Uh, she's also agreed to stay for a brief orientation session uh, for that new employee. So ads were placed in the Westerly Sun, uh, also on the town's website, uh, along with a civilian job application and a job description for the position. And that was on Sunday, September 28th. Deadline date for the receipt of applications is October 17th. And uh, after a review of the applications, Finance Director Brian Russell and I will interview candidates in an attempt to fill the position. And lastly, uh, on September 15th, uh, Christine Brochu, the tax assessor, uh, and I met with Russ Crossman from Crossman Engineering at the Saugatucket Springs Apartments to discuss a proposed easement uh, on town property, which would allow Women's Development Corporation the ability to drop a second well to serve their future needs. Um, <clears throat> because of the complexity of the issue, uh, we spoke with representatives from Crossman Engineering. They came down. Uh, they reviewed the documents that were applicable to it. They also made a site inspection, 
and it was uh, mutually agreed upon that they were going to be referred to the Rhode Island Department of Health to obtain a variance uh, rather than an easement from the town at this time. So and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Bill, folks? No. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Uh, next on our agenda under old business, discuss and vote to authorize borrowing an amount not to exceed $2 million to finance the reconstruction of town roads prioritized by the town council at its July 21st, 2014 meeting. Okay. Can I make the motion and then we can discuss it? Sure. I'd like to make the motion that Hopkinton Town Council authorize borrowing an amount not to exceed $2 million to finance the reconstruction of town roads prioritized by the town council at its July 21st, 2014 meeting. I'll second that. Cool. Motion, motion made and seconded. Uh, discussion? Scott? God bless you. Don't rewrite. Okay. David? Um, no, I'm fine. It's, 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 you know, I'll go along with the uh, highway department as far as which, uh, prior, uh, which road should be done first. And uh, I think it's uh, something that has to be done. And I think uh, let's, get, let's get to it. Okay. Barbara? Um, I'm hoping that there's some flexibility so that between the town manager and the Public Works Department, they can um, choose if another road suddenly comes up and it's more important than the first mm. one scheduled. But I think it's an excellent bond. I'm glad we have it, and to more power to you. The sooner you can start, the happier we all are. And this was also approved by the uh, voters, the residents, so that's uh, what's prompted this, precipitated this. Uh, what's that? Oh. Chip? Yeah. question? When was this approved by the voters? Was it under the, the last referendum in June? Was it? It was yeah. on there. Yeah. Okay. I just, I just. That's fine. my mind. Yeah, that's one. That's why I want to figure that's probably why you, you probably <laughs> wanted to mention it. So, thanks, Tom. Thank um, okay. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Scott, nothing, huh? No. Okay. Any further discussion, folks? No. Okay. So All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain? No. I said aye. Oh, you said aye. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Uh, next under new business, update on health care services provided by the Wood River Health Services. Uh, Director Michael Lichtenstein. Michael. Thank you. I appreciate being able to come here. I usually come here when we're asking for money. Not, not, that's not the case today. So um, Frank was able to attend a session we had earlier this year when we, as part of National uh, Community Health Center Week, which is the first week or second week in August, there was a national award presented to our congressional delegation and Representative Langevin wasn't able to attend that in Providence, so we got to schedule him to come down and actually gave him that award as a champion for health care and supporting our work uh, at the health center and Frank was uh, gracious and able to attend that. Um, there were some comments I offered at that time and I'd like to share some of what we did then and some of the things that we're working on now and then open up to any questions that you might have. Um, as, as many of you know, we're part of a national movement, and in Rhode Island there are eight health center organizations. Uh, in fact, today we had, for the Rhode Island Health Center Association, we're in our 40th year of celebrating health centers in the state, so um, we had a great event this morning. But we all offer a wide range of services, and at the health center we offer primary care, um, medical services for newborns to the opposite end of the age spectrum. And we offer dental care, WIC, which is a program which supports young families who have economic challenges and they have children under the age of five, or they may be pregnant and expecting their first child. And for many, I remember when I came home first with my wife with our newborn, and we had these days in the hospital with nursing staff and medical assistants. We got home and it was, uh-oh, now what do we do? So our staff offers special support and nutrition counseling and to help the moms and dads to kind of get over that hurdle and that fear and to get on the path around healthy nutrition. And that's really a cornerstone of what we're trying to do at the health center is try to get ahead of the health care challenges, more preventive if we can, um, to get folks in on a routine basis who have chronic diseases and not wait for it to become a crisis. So that's one area. We do a lot around disease management, people with diabetes and hypertension, cardiovascular disease. And we try to start with the little ones about getting in to see the dentist. I won't ask how many of you have been to the dentist in the last six months or a year. Um, and I'm, I'm uh, one of those that at age four was carried by my dad into the dentist office, kicking and screaming. But I'm past that now. And I can walk through our dental offices without panic. But, um, 
uh, and social services that we offer. And, and I know Frank was particularly interested in a couple of themes over the, over the last several months. One uh, mentioned that we hired our first behavioral health manager. So this month, her name is Megan Burnt. She's a licensed independent clinical social worker. And instead of only having services we refer out, Megan will be developing integrated behavioral health services within the health center. So patients who come in and they may be seeing Dr. Campanari and raising a concern about eating, appetites off, feeling depressed, hopeless, you know, life is a challenge, to be able to say, I have a colleague that I'd like you to meet. Would you be willing to meet Megan? She's really good at helping people get past some of these challenges. Instead of just saying, I'd like to refer you to someone and give a card or have someone make a referral to Dr. So-and-so or Mary Smith down the street, Megan can come in, meet this person, uh, or follow up with a phone call and really create what we call a warm handoff. And we're hoping that that will help cement some of the referral challenges that people with mental health and substance abuse challenges face with unknown, what does it mean to go get counseling somewhere to get services? So, there are some horror stories out there, um, and there are some success stories, and sometimes people who don't want help can choose the one that suits their purposes best. Um, so that's new for us, and that's something that we'll be expanding. Um, last year, we saw about 7,000 patients at the health center, um, about over 23,000 patient, 23, patient visits, and that's not counting the behavioral health piece. That's gonna be growing, and we expect to see that number increasing as well. And in the last three years, we've counted, we've served over 11,000 patients as a whole. So people have come and gone, obviously, and some people don't come every year, but the federal government requires us to count visits and patients every year. The Rhode Island Health Center Association did something new this year. They contracted with an entity called Capital Link. It's something you can check out online. They're a well-established, reputable organization that um, helps with financing and economic impact of health centers across the country and other healthcare delivery. And they did analysis looking at all the health centers and all of our economic impact. And looking at the jobs we create, the number of employees, the services we provide, there's some you know, staggering numbers. They figured we saved the system about $9 million that would have been spent elsewhere. Um, Service we provided total 8.4 million, and they looked at our tax impact of 1.1 million dollars. Now, employing 65 people as we do now, um, we're a pretty large employer in Hopkinton. Um, I don't know who's larger. Um, there's probably someone out there, yeah, but Mr. Quinlan, maybe. Maybe Mr. Yeah. Quinlan. But uh, I think sometimes people look at that we come to the council and we go to foundations and go to others looking for financial support that we're a fairly significant economic driver and we do great jobs and uh, provide a valuable service. Um, you know, our goal is to provide integrated and coordinated care for our patients and the, the mission of the health center is to improve the health and well-being of our community by assuring access to affordable, high-quality health care, coordinated services, and health-related information. And our board, it's a group of volunteers, um, they're at least 51% by our federal regulations have to be active patients of the health center. So the people that are on our board of directors, and we're about 70 some percent now of our board, they're there as patients as well as community members, representing the community and making sure that Wood River is serving the community as well as helping to protect the organization. And I'd be remiss without in injecting another thank you to the council. You guys have been fabulous and wonderful supporters of ours, and not just in the, when it comes to budget time, but you know, people making comments about Wood River Health Services in, in a positive light, recognizing the high quality professionalism of what we do. But some recent highlights, I know you were asking, uh, I think a couple of visits ago, about the Affordable Care Act and what role might we play in helping to educate the community about the affordable care options. So we've hired and trained staff. Uh, there are about eight staff at the health center that have been trained, but we really have two people who that are our stars. And they're, uh, they're very actively involved in not only work at the health center, but going out to community locations to educate people about their options for health insurance. And from the beginning of the initiative, through today, so these are very current numbers, uh, we have assisted in, in one or two 
three or four or five visits, depending on some of the challenges. But the total was 3,898 assists. So 3,898 assists. That's great. There were 1,510 applications submitted and about 1,044, we estimate, number of folks that were enrolled. Now, we can't get that specifically because, you know, Frank might go and sign up on his own after coming to get some help from us. Mm -hmm. you know, there's no way of that coming back, you know, to be credited to Wood River. And we're gearing up for open enrollment, which starts November 15th and goes through February 15th. So folks who have not signed up and are looking for an opportunity, this is the season to begin. Um, and it begins November? November 15th. Though people can call the health center at any time and ask, for, mm -hmm. you know, I'm asking for questions about open enrollment or access to health care, we're happy to do that. We've also had good success with helping patients move towards a budget plan. Um, a couple of years ago we started and people were having some financial challenges and as you may recall there's a sliding fee scale for people up to a certain uh, income level and so their, re their fees are reduced but even at that some people have difficulty making payments. Um, we have a woman whose sole job is to work with that end of our business and will help people develop budget plans. So if you end up with $200, many of us could put that on a credit card or write a check or cash, but not all of our patients can do that. And so sometimes they, they would neglect coming in for care because they felt like, oh, I know they're going to ask me for money and I don't have it, and what do I do? And then they could be steered to Leanne to set up a budget plan and do $5 a month, $10 a month. We've had people walking out of her office with tears of joy because now they can carry their heads high knowing they're being responsible for what they owe and not having to worry about making an appointment. We are, we've received funding from the federal government to expand our capacity, so we'll be hiring an additional doctor and nurse practitioner and the medical assistant and nurse supports as well as administrative supports to help uh, support their work. Um, We'll be participating in a program the Department of Health has rolled out in the last year. It's called Wise Woman. It's for uninsured women who are involved with uh, cancer. And it's a cancer screening and resource support program. Um, so we'll be uh, beginning to engage with that. We're in plans with Westerly Hospital to help assist moving people away from using the emergency department and using primary care practice instead. And what we're looking at is opening up a uh, four exam room practice site right at the hospital. So that people who, and the data is about, in Rhode Island, about 44, 42 to 44 percent of folks who go to the emergency department, those visits could have been handled in their primary care practice. And you know how expensive it is to go yeah. to the emergency department. So <clears throat> by opening up a practice down the hall from the emergency department, we hope we'll be able to steer people to use our practice instead of the emergency department and for many of our patients who live in that area who have transportation barriers. And I know you were referencing transportation. You know the challenge of our folks getting around this area. We're hoping that they'll be able to access care where otherwise they've had some difficulties. Um, we also have plans to make improvements to our current facility. We'll be modifying our waiting area to make it more comfortable for our patients, to ensure a little more privacy, and to help support some team practice area. Um, and we've acquired an additional board member, uh, John Ur, who some of, many of you know from URE uh, Outfitters, has joined our board this year. Um, and we've been able to secure grants for improving data management, workforce training, facilities and equipment improvement, patient service coordination, and examples are Kimball Foundation, Workforce Training Board, the Health Resource and Service Administration, Department of Health, David Health Plans, the General Assembly. So our staff work hard at trying to get money outside of relying on our patients or the local towns uh, for doing that. Um, we have a new website, so visit us on our new website. It's um, look, you can Google Wood River Health Services and you'll find us. Um, and we also encourage you to like us on Facebook. There's, we usually post some helpful, useful information about what might be happening. And um, I'm happy to entertain any questions, but before I close, I wish you the best of luck in your upcoming election. <laughs> David, any questions for Michael? No, I just, uh, I, I think I can sum it up by just simply saying that uh, I'm very proud to have you in this community. Absolutely, yeah. It's a real, it's a real uh, plus for us. Yeah, I'm happy to, and I hope it's a plus for you too. It is, absolutely. Okay, yeah. thanks. Thank you, appreciate that.
I would certainly agree with Dave, but I, I have two. The, um, you said you had 7,000 people last year. What's the percentage of Hopkinton citizens out of the 7,000? Oh, uh, I don't have that. It's the largest percentage of people come from Hopkinton. I would, ass I would yeah, assume it is so. the largest, and that may be 18 or 20 percent. But I can I can get back and uh, forward that information so, to you. Maybe oh, okay. get so, bill, you know, so 18 to 20 percent. I, I think it's excellent. I mean, I'm really glad you are supporting. We have 8,188 citizens, so I certainly hope you're supporting quite a number of them. I think it's great. There is um, something, if you're, if you're curious, and it, you don't have to be a health center person to do this, there's actually a, um, the federal government has set up a website, or a, it's a fabulous tool, it's called udsmapper.org, where you can go in and you can find where patients are, not by who personally, but what percentage of patients are involved at what health center and what Great. part of the nation. And we have a pretty high penetration of patients in the in Hopkinton area. But I do hope I, I do hope there are more health centers. I think that's really one of the best ways for yeah, the healthcare yeah. um, uh, megalith to to go. Um, I had a question then too, is on, on the Westerly L and M relationship. Sure. Now that it's L and M, how has that relationship affected you, or not at all, or it's a benefit? To, how does that come? Um, that's a broad that's question. I would say, in, in, in very simply, it's benefited us. Okay. Um, you know, there there have been some difficulties and some realities that they've had to face, such as closing, you know, the like maternity, the OB, the OB mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. But it's through our relationship with them and their commitment to providing the right care, for the right mm -hmm. person, the right place, that they're willing to invite us. To, well, it was sort of a mutual conversation, but to allow us to open up a practice at the hospital. Sure, great. And within a a union shop, uh, mm -hmm. we're a non-union entity. Um, to say, from a leadership point of view, Bruce Cummings saying, this is the right thing to do. In the short run, it may actually hurt them financially in one regard, because if we're taking visits out of the emergency room, mm -hmm. right now they get paid per visit. Healthcare is changing in such a way that there's something called pay for value, not just pay for visit or pay for service. Mm -hmm. So that the health outcomes in a variety of ways are being used to evaluate the finances and what people get or don't get. So if they can help the state system and the national economy by moving health care to more appropriate setting, there'll be more incentives for them down the road as opposed to just, you know, mm -hmm. you know pay for the visit, pay for the visit. Right. But so they've been be very, very supportive of us and what we're yeah, trying to do. It would do. be very nice to keep that as a, as, you know, people do like their doctors to be as local as possible. Absolutely. So I think that's excellent. But I think the work you're doing is wonderful. Thank you very much. Scott, anything from Michael? I'm uh, glad that Wood River Health Service is in town, and I'm also a patient, so thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Our yeah, best, thanks. our thanks. best um, feedback is when our patients say, "Thank you." Um, they know yeah. directly the benefit of, of what. Yeah, it's I just had one out. quick question, Mike, on that um, behavioral health person, Megan. Is that uh, is her position based on a grant, or is that she on the staff now? Well, um, is that like is she going to in six months? All the money dried up, and she's going to. No, our, we have our board has a very firm commitment to okay. behavioral health as part of our organization, okay. and. Um, Neighborhood Health Plan of Rhode Island has advanced us um, a grant to help bring her to our organization, um, recognizing that day one, she's not seeing patients. There's an elaborate credentialing process that we have to go through. So she's been with us for a few weeks. She hasn't seen a patient yet, which means she hasn't created any billing yet. Um, but our goal is to build that product, that model, that service for our patients, and insurance and payers will come. And again, part of the incentive piece is their expectations that health centers like ours and primary care practices will have more than just the doctor and nurse as, as an option. Um, and the federal government is looking at putting more money to support, they're calling it integrating or the integration of behavioral health and primary care practices. I use the term integration and co coordination because not everyone wants to be integrated at Wood River. Mm -hmm. They could see their doctor at Wood River. They may have a therapist in the community. Right. Mm -hmm. We want to coordinate information as appropriate and not say, oh, give up that person, come and yeah. see us. Yeah. I mean, we can't serve 11,000 people. And the data is probably one out of four, one out of five people have challenges with mental health. And if you add in substance abuse, the numbers go up. So it's a lot of people. Um, that we know are having challenges. So our commitment is long-term to our patients to make sure we help them get the right service for what they or their family need. So 
Okay, great. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for all you do. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next under uh, new business is to discuss, consider, and authorize the town manager to enter into a three-year agreement between Direct Energy and the Town of Hopkinton for power supply, coordination services, and electricity from December 14, 2014 through December 2017. Bill McGarry. Thank you. Good. Oh, okay, Brian. Good evening, Council. Hello, Brian. How are we doing? Good. Good. Uh, so, as you may know, uh, the town's current electrical uh, contract expires in December. So, the finance department has been out negotiating with other local suppliers uh, and national suppliers to try to find us the next uh, best option um, for our next fixed contract. Um, I believe that Direct Energy has offered us the best contract available. Uh, they currently participate in a program called the REP program, which is the Rhode Island Energy Aggregation Program. It's through the Rhode Island League of Cities and Towns, uh, which basically allows us to consolidate uh, all the small municipalities and get like uh, essentially a group rate mm -hmm. as opposed to going as uh, individual as we would have to do with like say National Grid, uh, their number one competitor. Um, so when I look back on our last contract, we just previously are coming to close of a three year fixed contract with uh, Direct Energy and we saved around $5,000 over that three years by going with them rather than National uh, Grid. And I think this same cost benefit is going to replicate with this contract. Um, and the other issue with National Grid is they don't offer three year contracts. Uh, generally they'll do six a month, three month, um, rarely longer than that. So we'd go through this every six months and you know, the energy market being as volatile as it is, you don't know what you're going to get six months from now or six months after that. So I think the three-year contract that Direct Energy is offering us probably gives us the safest um, alternative uh, to, to supplying the town with electricity over that time frame. Any questions? Uh, there was another thing I actually mentioned yeah. earlier. I, I, uh, there was an article in the Providence Journal because one of the issues I had when I was analyzing this is that National Grid isn't going to offer up their rates for 2015 until December. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of hard for me to compare um, and con contrast the, you know, the cost of the two companies. Um, however, there was recently an article in the Providence Journal uh, that stated they're anticipating a 3.5% increase. Um, with that being said, that would bring them up to about 11 cents um, per kilowatt, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Direct Energy is offering us 9.9 .9 over the three years. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, even at the 11 cents, you know, that's going to be a short-term window of you know three to six months, and then we'll have to, depending mm -hmm. on market rates, you know, try to find another contract. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Brian on this? I think it's a no-brainer. Just as easy as that. I think we've done it before too. I think it makes very good sense. I have no problems. Yeah, the only question I had, which I already chatted with Brian about, was the uh, how do you know, you know what to compare it against if, if grid's uh, schedule isn't out yet? But I guess you've already kind of got an indication. Yeah, and, and looking again, looking back on the history, um, mm -hmm. you know, over the three years, I I researched uh, National Grid's rates and they were consistently higher. Right. So there's nothing that would indicate that that would change. change right. So, All right, Scott, do you have anything for Brian? No, no comments. Okay, I would move that the Hopkinton Town Council authorize the town manager to enter into a three-year agreement between Direct Energy and the town for power supply coordination services and electricity from December 2014 through December 2017. I will second that. Okay, motion made and second. Any other comments, folks? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Okay. Next, under new business, um, discuss the repair of the currently inoperable water line meter located at the Richmond Hopkinton town line. Bill. Thank you. Uh, this was placed on the agenda for uh, informational purposes for the Hopkinton Town Council and uh, the people of Hopkinton. Uh, <clears throat> on Thursday, September 18th, uh, there was a meeting held at the uh, Hope Valley Fire Department. Uh, present was uh, Chief Stanley and uh, Richmond Water Department Director uh, Leon Millis. Uh, Richmond Town Administrator Rob Brock uh, and myself to discuss the repair of the water line meter uh, at the town line. Um, as you are probably aware that uh, the meter at the line has been uh, inoperative for uh, some time and this meter measures the total amount of water passing from Richmond into Hoppington uh, and currently it is the individual water meters 
at the 48 user locations that determine the actual amount of water used by Hoppington residents and businesses. Uh, any other water that flows into the town from Richmond uh, is unmetered at this time. And uh, it's the town of Richmond's intention to repair the water line meter on uh, Friday, October 17th uh, at 9 o'clock p.m. Uh, they originally wanted to do it earlier, uh, but I spoke with Rob Rock and uh, uh, Town Council President Frank Landolfi, and we convinced them to uh, scale that back for a couple of hours until 9 o'clock p.m. Um, <clears throat> it is anticipated that the meter will be shut off for no longer than two hours and probably a lot less. Uh, once the meter is repaired, uh, we're going to be required by agreement uh, to pay for the water through the meter, which that was not used by the 48 users. And the vast majority of that amount of water is to flush the hydrants twice a year in Hoppington. According to Fire Chief Fred Stanley, there are 60 hydrants in the entire system, 50 in Richmond, and 10 fire hydrants in Hoppington. Uh, we estimate that the, uh, in order to flush the, the Hoppington hydrants, it'll uh, take approximately 150,000 gallons of water at three, uh, three cents a gallon, uh, approximately $450. Now, once the Hoppington Town Council has uh, reviewed this matter, uh, tomorrow morning uh, we have, we're prepared to send out individual letters to each of the 48 users on the water line. Um, I've already drafted the letter and everything's all set to go. Uh, to advise them exactly the day, the date, the time, and the length of the anticipated shutoff. We also intend to uh, put it on our website uh, on Wednesday morning so they'll have at least a week's notice. And I've been in conversation with um, uh, Ron McDonald as far as uh, using the uh, the uh, code red system to notify the people via phone, uh, but we just have to determine whether or not we can focus it or limit that focus to, you know, the, the, the people on Main Street in the area. We're, we're unable at this time um, to make a determination, but we're checking into that now. But certainly they're all going to get individual letters to let them know that the water is <coughs> going to be shut off. And finally, it was just mutually agreed upon between the parties that we're going to meet one more time uh, just before the shutoff on, on October 17 uh, to make sure everything's in line with respect to the lighting, possible inclement weather conditions, uh, you know, who's going to be there and those kind of things, the details related to the incident. But we don't anticipate any uh, logistical problems. We've been told that um, once the water is shut off, that uh, if there's a problem, um, uh, with a with pump not working, they can just put it right back in and the water will continue on. So it doesn't appear that the water is going to be interrupted for a considerable amount of time. We're hoping that the, uh, the meter itself can be repaired just by some, uh, just cleaning it out and um, they think there's a rock stuck in the gears so that hopefully they can mm. square it away that way. But we won't know, they won't know until they get in there. So. No, quick question. It's unmeted. Why would we want to fix it? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. Just, yeah. just kidding. Sorry, Richmond. Okay. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Um, um, yeah. Um, what is the cost of the meter? Do we have to pay for that? Uh, we have to pay for the meter tester, uh -huh. which is seven hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. And we pay that through the town or through the water users? Oh no, we pay that to the meter tester. Okay, but I mean, but we as the municipality pay it the 48 users do not pay it? No, we would pay that, would yes. Pay it, so it's municipal. And then um, once they fix this, and we're assuming we're going to have 150,000 gallons for the hydrants, if there's anything beyond that 450, how do you test where the water goes, or where it may leak? Or, you know, now we don't really know how much water goes in, except for the meters that we've had, the meters that are working. Uh, according to the contract between the town of Hoppington and the uh, Hope Valley Fire District, uh, we, we cannot charge them for any of the water that they use for flushing the hydrants. Wait, I, I don't okay. have a problem with that. It's called, if, I mean, we're assuming that's about $450 because you're assuming it's about 150,000 gallons, which, right. is, which is fine. But if we find that once this meter is freed up and the 48 houses are accounted for, 
and the 150,000 gallons is accounted for, and then there is more than that, how do we find out where we may have a problem? Since we haven't had this for a while, I don't know how much water is actually not being registered. Because we don't I mean, know it's It's like a double 000. negative. I mean, you, don't, yeah. you can't know. Right. If you're not metering it, you can't know you know right. how much it's going to cost and how many gallons are going through and who's getting it so then do we go back to richmond and they have to retest i think you're confusing the two part like the the, the two hydrants the, the, the no, 10 no. hydrants they're just flushing 10 annually. hydrants no it's fine no, i don't oh, have a okay. problem with the hydrants i don't have a problem with the 48 people it's because we haven't measured anything we really don't know how much water is going through we are assuming it's at least another 150,000, which is perfectly valid but we don't know if there's any other loss that we're not aware of, nor is Richmond. So once we have a meter that says, well, this is how much water is going into your town, and this is how much we can account for, but here's how much is left over, how do we determine that? Or is that something Richmond has to do? Um, there are two separate water lines. One is for the 48 households, and the other one is for fire flow. Uh -huh. uh, it's, I think, a two-inch line for the for the 48 users and a 12 inch line for the fire flow. So they measure uh, through a separate line exactly how much water will go through that line. Okay, so we'll be able to at least know which line may be causing the problem too, if there's a problem after they've opened up the main meter. The main meter opens up and suddenly we're metering more water than we anticipated. The meter uh, monitors both lines. Okay, so. So the smaller line that goes to the 48 houses, we have their meters that all work. Right. And we can, we can tell where that is. It's the fire department line that could end up being the problem line. If, if there's more water than uh, an extra 150,000 gallons, if it's uh, 500,000 gallons, there's obviously a problem somewhere. Well, we would have to determine exactly uh where that other water went. Exactly, what I just meant is who does that? Does Richmond do that? Do we do that in conjunction with Richmond? I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd have to check into that. Yeah. I'd have to check into that. Yeah, that's just the unintended consequence of now opening a water line meter that hasn't been working. Yeah, but it should have been working. I, I understand you know, that. We're getting billed anyway, right? No. No. Not, no I mean, in not. terms of the, the, the fire departments being billed and so are the 48 users, right? But, but right now? Yeah. Uh, they must be. We're not getting billed for any excess water that flows any into excess? that flows into Hopkinton right. that's not used by the 48 users on the line. Okay. Right. So, so this new meter is going to be a double check on the yeah. homeowners. That's right. They have their individual ones. This will check the water coming in the two-inch line, uh, and they can compare and contrast that against the individual meters. Great. It will also measure the 12-inch 12, 12 line, which, which measures, all, measures all the other water that's used, that's coming from Richmond to Hoppington, the vast majority of that would be for flushing hydrants. That so, the part that's not used for flushing hydrants, uh, I'm not sure how much that is or how we would determine that. I'd have to check with the town of Richmond. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. It's just what's the next stage if there's an issue after they've opened that up, and then who pays for it? Um, yes. Hopefully, uh, Bill. Bill, where's the site of this meter? Uh, it's by Dowfield. It's in Dowfield. Uh, okay, just it's, not, it's, not, it's not on Route Three then. So we're not going to we're not going to block off traffic on Route Three. No, it's it's in Dow Field as you as you take it right, just where the National Grid place is there. Oh, no, no, yeah. Straight in there. So. Oh, okay, so so it's not going to interrupt traffic. Or no, cause a problem with that. No. Um, you mentioned it was it was uh, three cents a gallon. Actually, it's it's three one hundredths of a cent. You know, it's it's point oh oh three cents yes. per gallon. Oh, yeah. Just I just want to clarify yeah. that so people are going to say, oh, my God, three cents a gallon. Oh yeah, my so, mistakes. Yeah, no, no. no. The other thing is, is uh, based on, on these figures, I don't know, it just seems like a lot of, a lot of water for flushing hydrants. You got 10 hydrants in Hopkinton, they're going to use 150,000 gallons, that's 15,000 gallons per hydrant for flushing. That's a lot of wasted water. Well, they do it twice a year. Okay, that's 750,000 gallons of water, you know, you know uh, 7,500 7, 7, gallons of water per flush, per hydrant. Wow, it's, well, it's a shame that we have, you know, I, I can see where the hydrants have to be flushed and I think it's a very good idea, but boy, that's a lot of water just being poured down the drain. Those, really. those numbers came from Chief Fred Stanley. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, I, I yeah. can only... No, I'm not beating you up, Bill, I'm just, put, I'm just saying, boy, that's a lot he, of water just being pumped yeah. out into the street. 
It must have to be tested then. That's a, I mean, this that's is a yeah, result it's gonna, of that test, right? Uh, it has. To, it takes a, like a half an hour, I think, before that the water clears, and yeah. then you have to rechlorinate it. It's. it's yeah. Wow. It's a lot yeah, of work. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to become a complex problem after the fact, though, too. We'll have to follow it up, you know, after the fact Oof. to make sure that everybody's getting the right amount of water. We know how much water is going in and out, and then it is indeed chlorinated or whatever it needs to do. Because I know our, um, my neighborhood will close down water. But when you start it back up again, you have to boil it for a while. And you need to make sure that there's a, you know, the, the pressure is equalized, which takes a while, too. This is really an issue, an initiative from the town of Richmond. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, we don't have really much to say about it based on the contractual agreements between Hoppington and the town of Richmond and the contextual, contractual agreement between Hoppington and the Hope Valley Fire District. I mean, we're, re we're really locked in as to, you know, being required to pay for it and not having the right to disapprove it. I mean, it's so contractual based. Scott, you have anything to build? No. Okay. Mr. Buck. Yeah, uh, Bob, you're on the right track. Um, remember the park there next to the fire department when it was leaking? Yeah. Uh, one of the lines froze and they were dumping mm. thousands, tens of thousands of gallons into the river out back. Um, that's probably why the water level never went down. <laughs> <laughs> so that meter probably would be a good idea to uh, for that. Yeah. They would tell sure us when it was leaking and stuff like that. The other question I have, uh, probably more importantly, is the payment. Um, that should not come from the municipal budget. That should go to the water line users. Um, I don't know what the all, all, all that yeah. all the money. Um, I'm my understanding is goes for anything to pay for the water line. It strictly comes out of the water line budget. Now there should be. I, I don't know um, if there's a surplus in there. There is. Yeah. That they can use that for, um, but it. Mm. It should be paid for by the, my understanding is that everything to do with the water line gets paid for through the water line users that are using that system. Um, somebody that's in Woodville that doesn't have anything to do with the water system, why should they be required to pay um, anything to, for upkeep when they have no benefits of it? Yeah. Tom, Contra contr well, Contra contractually, who knows? I, I haven't really read the agreement in its entirety, but. Contractually, the town is required to pay, but it doesn't s say where the money comes from. Okay. Or perhaps maybe, I think there's like $70,000 in yeah. in the uh, the water fund. Right. You know, perhaps, it's it's plenty, could, plenty of perhaps it could come from that, yeah. yeah. I, I would agree with Tom. I think it's okay, that, that's all I want to yeah, say. Yeah, I just thought that it should valid come point, from, the, valid from, point. The, from the water line thing. Uh, the, the, I, like I said, I thought there was a surplus that had yeah, there is. with the uh, time um, just yeah. before we lowered the rates a couple of years back, so that's all. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, last so, public. I just want, so you'll just let us know how everything turns out and what's happening. You'll just update us on this at the end of the yeah, fix. I'm being in the party of 17. Oh, good. Lucky <laughs> back on. Lucky you. And With your high boots. <laughs> and, uh, we'll keep you posted. <coughs> and before the meeting, before the actual turnoff, you have one more meeting anyway, too, right? You said? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Um, okay. I see you in galoshes in a suit. Yeah. <laughs> Worthy of a picture. Uh, last public forum. Anyone out there wishing to be heard? Okay, motion to adjourn, Mr. Scott Bill. Mr. Mr. President, I move that, that we adjourn in memory of Joseph R. Pendleton and Frederick R. Schofield, Jr. Thank you. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.